Welcome back to the 48 Now Desk. I'm digital host AJ Wiest, and today I am joined with Miss Regina Davis. Regina is the sister of Ricky Nelms of Moulton, Alabama, who went missing in Kansas back in 1988. Uh, Regina, thank you so much for joining in with me today. Um, and You're can, welcome. Absolutely. And uh, can you first describe the relationship that you had with your brother growing up? Uh, was he an older brother, a younger brother? He was a younger brother. We were just a year apart. Um, we were we were pretty tight. We did everything together. Um, the whole family, most of the time, was together. But, you know, I mean, we were as tight as brother and sister could be, considering we were just a year apart. Right. Um, and can you describe, like, the kind of person Ricky was growing up, like, uh, what was his personality like? Uh, like, who, who was Ricky? Well, Ricky was, Ricky was a hard one to describe because he, he kept to himself a lot. But growing up, he was your typical neighborhood boy. He loved his bicycles when he was younger. Um, then he moved on to cars. He loved the older model cars, you know, um, he liked to, um, he just liked to tinker with cars. Um, he was always fascinated with, with that and growing up as kids. I mean, we would play softball every Sunday um, in our backyard. It was just, you know, Ricky would give you the shirt off of his back. If he thought you needed it more than he did, he would do that. Um, he was always willing to help anybody whether they ever helped him or not, that wasn't an issue with him. He would help anybody. Um, and when he, when he left going back to Kansas in February of 88, um, mm -hmm. he, was, he was still young. I mean, he was almost 20. So he was a typical 20 year old boy. You know, he wasn't what you could, I wouldn't call him a man but he was a 20 year old boy. Right. And um, going, going off of that is a 20 year old. Um, he got, I believe a job up in Kansas. Um, do you know if he had any friends, colleagues, um, any coworkers that you are aware of uh, when he did make that move up to Kansas? Yeah, he was working with um, what we were told when he left, he told my mom that he was roofing houses with Jerry Trussell in Kansas, in Wichita, Kansas. That, I mean, and I, I mean, they owned a roofing company and they mm -hmm. followed tornadoes and storms, you know, repairing roofs. So yeah, he, he went to Kansas. He left Alabama with Jerry Trussell. And the last we heard, he was, going back to Kansas to go to work. Right. And about how long was he up there in Kansas with Jerry um, before that first, um, when you first heard that he had been reported missing or that he was reported missing? Well, my mom, Ricky always called home at least once a week, but my mom didn't hear from him for at least a month. Then she started getting worried. Um, when he didn't call or come home, Ricky was the type that, he was a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. So he would at least come home once a month, but he would call her at least once a week. And when she didn't hear from him, she, she began to get worried because he did have some legal stuff in, in Wichita and he told my mom when he left that he was going back, I believe he said it was Sumner County. I think he said Sumner County. And he was gonna, he said, I'm gonna stand trial. And if I don't get time, he said, I'm coming back home. And that was the last thing that she heard from him. She reported him missing in July of 88. And you mentioned uh, like legal stuff and that he was going to stand trial. That's the last you heard of him. 
Uh, do you know yeah. what the case was about with that legal matter stuff at all? He told my mom that it was something to do with the, the person he was working for with the roofing job. Um, and that's all he ever told her. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, I come to find out, it was like where they were stealing cars or something, to my knowledge, that's, um, so he was standing trial for that. But he went to court. I mean, we have court papers show where he went to court and he walked out of that courthouse. But it's just like he disappeared, dropped off the face of the earth after he left that courthouse. Right. And um, of course, when he first went missing, when you first heard um, where, where you first weren't hearing from him, uh, what was going through your head, uh, your family's head? I believe your mom, Kathy, I believe she filed a missing person report. Yes. Um, she thought for a long time that he just, you know, he got time. He got jail time until she got that phone call from Jerry Trussell stating that you know, the whole story about he had went to Tammy Crow's house, left his house. He had got a phone call about 8.30 the night that, the same day that Ricky went to court, that night he got a phone call. And it was supposedly from this man that Ricky worked for that he had turned state's evidence on um, that told Ricky, he, you know what you did wrong. You know what you did today was wrong. And Ricky's reply was supposedly, yeah, it might have been. And he said, well, you know, you're not going to live through the night. Ricky said, I might not, but I'm sure going to try. Well, Jerry told my mom that he left his house and walked down to Tammy Crow's house, which was kind of odd because they lived together. So this is where the story got kind of sideways. Tammy told him that Ricky come to her house, but he left about 1030. And that is their story. But they were living together. All three of them were sharing a mobile home. So the story didn't make sense. And then when I talked to the detectives out there, that's basically the same story that they told about Punky Harry. So mm -hmm. if that's where it, it gets kind of iffy, maybe. You don't know what to believe. I don't believe any of that because as this investigation has went forward, we've learned a lot and there's been a lot of lies told, a lot of stories told. But my ultimate goal at the end of this is I just want my brother. I want my brother's body. I don't care what it takes to get it. I just want a body that we can bury and put some closure to this. Um, I just want him home. He deserves to be buried like a human being, not an animal, just wrapped in something and tossed in a hole Cause, because that's how he was buried. They know that. That come from the two that were involved in it. So I just want a body home. I just want to bring him home so I can bury him and put, all, put him, my mom, and all of this to rest. I mean, they've given information, but it's spotty. It's, it may be here. It may be there. Uh, try over here. Try over there. It, it's... I don't care about their stories mm -hmm. because that don't mean nothing to me. I want my brother. I just want to bury him, put him by my mom. We lost our mom in 21. She died never knowing what happened to him. My dad is sick right now and I'm going through a lot with him. Then I have this. I do not want something to happen to my dad, not knowing what happened to Ricky, just like it did my mom. I just want him home. 
Right. Absolutely. And I, that is very, very understandable. Um, you said your mom passed away in 2021. Um, where was she buried and where would you like your brother to be buried? My mom was buried at Caddo Cemetery there in East Lawrence, around East, the East Lawrence area. Um, I would put Ricky there by her. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, right there, right there with her. Because like I said, he was a mama's boy. He was always a mama's boy. I'm the oldest, and then it was him. Um, and he was, you know, he was the first son. So she was always closer to him. She worried more about him because, like I said, he could be, he could be rowdy. But as far as getting into a lot of trouble, he didn't. I mean, typical traffic violations, speeding tickets, you know, stuff like that um, here in Alabama. But it was nothing that boys his age didn't do. But she was very close to him, and he was to her. So I would want to put him there with her. That's, mm -hmm. that's all I want to come out of this is for me to be able to get him and give him a, a proper burial instead of being buried like some animal that, I mean, I've seen more compassion for an, a, a dead animal on the side of the road than what was shown for my brother. Mm -hmm. He was just wrapped in a tarpaulin or something and just thrown in a hole, like discarded like some animal. He might not have been anything to anybody else that he ever knew, or on this planet for that matter. But to my mom, to me, and my baby brother, my dad, he was ours. He is ours, and we want him home. I just want him home. Right. And you, you mentioned all the other stories that have been told. Um, what do you personally, in your heart, believe happened to your brother Ricky? And what do you think it will take to, uh, for you um, to bury him, I guess, next to your mother? Like, what do you think it will take from law enforcement, investigators? We just need somebody that can give us a definite pinpoint. They have an area that they were looking at and that they were Lord knows that those detectives out there have been diligent mm. looking in the spots that they were told to look. But it, we, we just need somebody that is willing to say, look, I know where he is. This is where he is. I can show you because there's no prosecution for this. I mean, I don't care. Like I said, I, I don't care. I just won't I want him home if they find him then I can send somebody to pick up his remains and bring him home and just do it the right respectable way and give him a proper burial that's all I want and somebody knows people in Alabama know what happened to him, why, and where he is. But they won't tell because they don't want to be involved. They don't want, I don't know if they're thinking that maybe they say something that it's going to further implicate Jerry. I don't care who it implicates because he, he has immunity. That's mm -hmm. uh, That was offered to him and Tammy. But she keeps saying she knows, but you have to talk to Jerry. That's what she has said. I know, but you have to talk to Jerry. Jerry's not talking. I don't understand that. I mean, he's not going to get any more time. He's not going to be prosecuted for it. I don't understand why he won't tell exactly where he is so that we can get him home. You know, it's, it's, I don't think we're asking for a lot. It's been 36 years 
And I just want him home. I want to bury him by my mom like a human being, like a, like a son, like a brother. But I can't because they're not willing to tell exactly where he is. Right. You mentioned Jerry. Is Jerry Trussell, is he still up in Kansas or is he back in, in Alabama? Where is Jerry right now? Jerry is in prison in Hutchinson, mm -hmm. Kansas. Tammy is out and she lives in Wichita, Kansas. But Jerry is still serving prison time for the murder of Hunky Harry, mm -hmm. which is how I think that my brother died. I thoroughly believe that they killed my brother in the same manner that they killed Hunky. Uh, probably for the same reason. I don't know. But I honestly believe that the way Punky was killed is the exact same way my brother was killed, but my brother was killed in 88. They thought they got away with it for 10 years, and that's why they did the same thing with Punky. When they find one body, I promise you they will find the other because they're probably together. Right. And for anyone out there who might be, who knows something about this case, but they're holding back, what would you personally say to them? Just tell us where he is. I mean, that is all we're asking. It's just tell, tell us where he is. That's all we want. Um, you don't have to, I mean, if you leave a tip, you don't have to leave your name. You don't have to leave your phone number. There's ways to do it anonymously. Anonymously, I can't right. speak today. Um, but there's ways to do that. And I mean, but that's all we want. That's all we need is just a location. Just tell us where he is. And I'll take care of it from there. If the detectives find him, then I can bring him home. That's all I want. That's all my dad wants. That's all my brother wants. That's all we want is just tell us where he is so we can bring him home. Right. And finally, Regina, can you just talk a little bit about your childhood growing up? What was it like growing up in Moulton? Um, what was the family dynamic like? Um, just like, just talk about just growing up in Moulton. Um, we lived in a small town. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe I don't know, one city block. We lived in Trinity, not mm -hmm. in Boston. We lived in Trinity. Um, every night I think that we lived together. Um, that's why this is so shocking because we grew up right across the road from Jerry Trussell and his family. Uh, we were all friends, always riding bicycles together, playing um, in cotton fields and in hay fields. And just typical teen stuff, kid stuff. Um, we just, we were just neighborhood kids. Mm -hmm. um, we learned, all of us learned to ride bicycles at the same time. Um, walking up and down what was a mountain hole up, you know, between everybody's house, going from one house to the other, you know, just being kids. Mm -hmm. We, you know, my dad was for bed, making my daughter go to the That's what my dad did. Jerry's parents, we, uh, they all knew each other. They helped each other. Everyone knew each other. It was nothing that you could Everybody helped each other. So that's, I mean, we didn't know anything different. If one needed help, they could help. And Ricky and Jerry, just, I mean, they were close. They were always working on, like, J 
Jerry's work trucks, or what they called it, the roofing trucks. Um, they were always together. All of the boys were always together. That's that's why it was so hard to believe that the stories that we were being told, yeah. it was it was just hard to believe at first. But now, no, it's making sense. You know, from going from neighborhood kids playing ball in the back, you know, throwing cotton balls at each other in a cotton field. That's that's what I don't understand. Well, Regina, thank you so much for joining on with me today and sharing your story. Um, I greatly appreciate it, and uh, my hopes are up. I, I hope you all be able to, to find him and uh, lay him to rest.